about your announcement. It's on the back of our program. There's just, you know, some same, some different. A few things to take note of. This Saturday is our Christmas Eve candlelight celebration. I'm marrying those, those feelings of the candlelight service with the celebratory marking of our Savior's birth, because I think both are important. So join us if uh, you're around for 7 p.m. here on Saturday the 24th. It will be celebratory because kettles will be done, everything will be done and dusted and blocked away, and uh, more important than that is our Savior's birth that we will be celebrating on that night. Also, uh, Sunday the 1st is our young adult and youth group New Year's kind of a Christmas party, but a New Year's party because it's on New Year's Day at our house. It'll be after church on Sunday the 1st from 2.30 to 4.30. So if you fall into that category, youth group, which is high school teenagers, uh, to, hey, my children in the front, to young adults, which if you're wondering if you're in that category, ask me, because I'll tell you truthfully if you're in that category. <laughs> Lovingly, but truthfully, I'll tell you the truth about your salary. So, uh, if you're wondering if that's you, you can ask me and I'll tell you. Also, on New Year's Day, something to note, that is going to be our fifth Sunday of Advent. That's when we're going to finish out our Christmas tide at that point of the Advent season. And there won't be Sunday school that day because we'll have been ringing in the New Year. And so you can sleep for an extra hour and then come to church for 11 o'clock at, I mean, in this room, on the 1st of 2023. This is our last week of kettles. So many of you gave of your time yesterday and throughout the season, and we're so grateful to you. Uh, Kevin Murray was saying the kettles felt good when he brought them in last night. They felt like it was a successful day, so praise God. Thank you for giving of your time. And there's still more to give if you're able. This is our last push, our last week. And we're praying God would bless those efforts. We do have one more announcement that's not on our program, but I wanted to let you know that it's coming and it's going to be great. Sunday, January 15th. That is the day that we have a special guest from the Chosen People's Ministries coming to do church with us. If you don't know what the Chosen People Ministries are or is, it's a ministry of Messianic Jewish people who want to share the gospel with their Jewish friends and family to let them know that Christ is coming and for them as well. And so this great guy, his name's Dennis, he's coming and he has such an incredible testimony. He's going to come during Sunday school as well to chat and answer questions and talk about that. So please, you come. If you have Jewish friends or family, invite them because that is like the, the crux of this. He really is wanting to share Jesus. With, with his people, and uh, we get to, as, I don't know if you know this, as a person from the West Coast, it was very apparent to me moving to the East Coast, that there are a lot more Jewish people here than there are on the West Coast, a lot more. And we want to share Jesus' love with them too. It's, it's for them as well. And so this is important for us uh, to share in that. Kevin Murray, did you have anything else about Dennis you wanted to share? More will be coming. More will be coming yeah. this week. Okay. We just got the confirmation that it's the 15th, and so we're excited about that. So mark your calendars for that Sunday, please. And now Seamus is going to come and share our call to worship with us. Inspired by the week. Chapter inspired by the week, chapter one, forty six verses eight through twelve. Our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. God looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God has shown strength with God's arm. God has scattered the cloud and the thoughts of their hearts. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Come, the God is filling you with this. 
Come, let us worship God.
and stars that light the sky. But perhaps there's another miracle. One of Mary saying yes when God asked her to believe, and Joseph saying yes when God asked him to trust. They had to change everything about their lives, and the birth of the Christ child wasn't possible until they did. What does it mean for you, for me, for us today to say yes to this story? To believe that it might be possible for the darkness to be transformed to light and for peace to come to the world. Those who know the darkest of the world know the fragility of light. So fragile. We hold our breath as candles flicker, don't we? We know they don't always last. The birth of Jesus doesn't make everything right in one moment, does it? But it shows us that the only way that darkness can be beaten is through him, is to say yes to this birth of light in Jesus. So as we take just a moment of quiet, and I pray, bring to your mind now the people that you love in this season, the people that are broken, physically, spiritually, relationally. Pray for those that need this light to be shared with them. God, this is the season for your miracles. I don't just mean the, the cute Christmas movie miracles, but I mean real, good miracles where you do work in the souls of people that are lost in darkness. And forgive us, Father, if we have not been waiting expectantly for those miracles to take place. Where there is sorrow, Lord, we pray for your grace to lighten darkness. Where there is despair, we pray that your hope would light that darkness. Where there is hatred, we pray for your forgiveness, Jesus, to light the way. Where there is war, may your love light that darkness. Father, if there is confusion, we pray for your peace to light up that darkness. God, we see so many injustices, and we pray for your courage to light the way through that darkness. Father, it's the season for miracles, and we as your people want to speak them out loud. We want to claim them because you have done it. You have brought your light through Jesus to the earth. Help us to not sit by the sidelines and hope that by some miracle, your light would pass us by, but that you would draw us into your work, bringing the light of Jesus to those around us. Those in fear and confusion and injustice and pain and sickness, all of those things, God, help us to be the messengers of light, of Christ's light to them. Thank you, God, for this Advent season. Thank you for giving us as your body this space to posture ourselves before your throne and to say, Lord, use me in this special time where people might be a little more ready to hear about the birth of one who changed eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take our tithes and offerings at this time. First James 1 James 1.17 reads, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. And 1 Peter 4, verse 10 reads, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. May each of us find the giving of our offerings and tithes to be a joyful experience of worship. Let us pray. 
Our Father, we offer our gifts to you in the name of Jesus. Grant us the wisdom of the shepherds who went to Bethlehem to find the Christ child and knelt down to worship him. Thank you for your wonderful gift. Amen. Like that all the time. 
promises to give us peace and hope and joy and, and rest. And with God, we always have good news that God sent his son, Jesus, to save us, right? Okay, everybody knows that. This reminds me that I had the pleasure of sharing this great news with a group of shepherds once. And you know, you know what I said? Do not be afraid. Oh, is this not on? Is that, can you hear me now? It got turned off in the back. My, 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 well, yeah, so. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. That's what I sound like when I talk to them. <laughs> it will bring great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I'm telling you the truth. There it is. That's what it's Sarah Lord. Sometimes. Don't let it scare you. This is great news. All right. You'll find a baby wrapped in strips of clothes and lying in a manger. Sorry, sometimes I sound like that. And it scares them, but most of the time it's very nice. The news, this news has been talked about and waited on for years and years. It was what everyone had hoped for, including us, all these years later. And, and it really was the best news ever that, that Jesus came. I got so excited about this news that after I told the shepherds, I got a bunch of my angel friends to help me celebrate sharing the news, and we sang some beautiful music. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. That was the song we sang, and we were very happy about it. Because good news is worth celebrating. How do we celebrate again? We get up and dance. Do you, do you dance? Okay, let's see. Let's see it. Let's get an example. Go ahead. Okay, I like it. I like it. Very good. That's good celebration. Do you have any celebration moves? Maybe a little jump? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, I like it. Excellent. Okay. How can we celebrate the good news of Jesus? We just had two good examples. Does anybody else have any examples? We can do one more. Yes. Going to church is a good celebration. Yes, look at that. That's great. During the times we have bad news and we feel worried, afraid, sad, unsure, or how to move forward, we can remember the good news of Jesus and can share the good news of hope, of love, joy with others. We can celebrate in the hard times because Jesus has had a plan for our lives. Jesus has already beat the bad news. So, this is good. This is a good thing. All right, everybody, give a hand for Jesus. I'll be back sooner or later. Thank you, children, for dancing and celebrating the good news. I'm sorry if I scared you with my creepy voice. to stand with us as we sing a little more we thankful.
for the most joyful moment in human history. On this night, they were favored by heaven. Imagine the wonder of that evening to those hungry shepherds. One moment, the sky was dark, with the news was not darker. The moment the angels were in their presence, with amazing news, stood the shepherds were afraid and asked, Why here? Why us? Perhaps they grew old. Their minds returned to that remarkable picture of the skies opening up. As soon as the first angel had delivered his message, a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, appeared, all of them praising God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. These words could not be forgotten. Not a line of the shepherds had life and breath. Angels could appear to them, to them, and they would be conduct for those who would be brought up to. And who would have thought that God might favor a shepherd? They thought God was far away. Now they were seeing him face to face. They thought God didn't care for them. Now God had singled him out to be the first to look upon the newborn king. God did not need to be feared. This child showed them how much God loved them. And Jesus, the shepherds discovered the gift of love. On the first <clears throat> Sunday of Advent, we read the symbol of love. It may be one of the shepherds say, glory to me. Glory to God in the highest, and on peace, on earth peace, God will glory.
sometimes you can even look at that in, in the story and you can contrast the shepherds and the magi. But it took a lot to be a shepherd. That's something we need to think about as well. Uh, there was a lot to it. It wasn't uh, totally pleasant to be out there while shepherds watched their flocks by night and make that nice little song that they didn't really sing Christmas time. But that could be a rough and a hard life. It took a lot of courage. Well, knowledge to look after the flock, and we shouldn't regard them as, as such. After all, we look to our good shepherd, don't we? A lot of courage, a lot of knowledge, and what it means to take care of the flock. So we look to our scripture for today from Luke chapter 2, from verse 8 to 15. We start there. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds, they saw the angels, but then we don't often give credit to the shepherds for what they did next. So they hurried off. They didn't wait around, they didn't wait a few days. They hurried off and they find Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who have heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So the shepherds they didn't keep it to themselves. What they did with the news of Jesus is the most incredible part. As soon as they saw Jesus, they went and they did something with the good news. They shared it. They shared it. So let's take some time today to remember what the gospel is, and so that we too can share it with others. So gospel, we're going to look at this, we're going to break it down into words that will maybe help us to remember a little bit and emphasize some uh, parts of it. So, who's got a letter G? Hold that up, let's wait around, Angel. People. G? Okay. Hold your hands together, Angel. There you go, there you go. For God, God created us to be with Him. Genesis 1, verse 1 is where the whole of this story begins. Keep it down, Angel. None of this life, nothing happens unless God created it. The gospel begins with God. God created us to be in relationship with Him. So again, let's repeat. First letter of gospel, G is for God. Next verse. O. O. It's O. So stand. O. <laughs> o in the gospel is for our. Our disobedience separates us from our relationship with God. Thank you, Stan. God created an amazing opportunity. For the people to be reunited with him through the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. That's who the shepherds saw, that's what the shepherds heard, and they went and they rejoiced. For the O, we move into Genesis 2, verse 3. Human disobedience messes up creation, the fall. As a result of the fall, we are separated from a holy, from a perfect God. And that is why we need the gift of Jesus, our Savior, and why we celebrate 
his coming at Christmas. Our disobedience separates us from God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the pathway back. And just like the light of the angels that invaded the shepherds' lives on that night, the light of Jesus interrupts our lives of disobedience. It's interesting what light does, isn't it? Light invades the darkness and shows what is secret in the dark. Our disobedience is both private and public, but Jesus can free us from it all and gives us forgiveness from our sins. S, who is the S? All right, pull that up, turn it around. S, for sins, sins. This is what Jesus frees us from, sins cannot be removed by any good deeds. Many people try to do good things. Maybe they try to balance out their life in some way. We see this cycle of trying to do good, trying to get into God's favor, even in the scriptures throughout the whole of the Old Testament. And it's a lie from the enemy that you just need to be a bit better, that God will love you whenever you're a bit better, then you can come before him. What is true is that there is nothing that you can do to save yourself or to earn the love of Jesus. So many of us and friends that we know, we just spinning our wheels over and over again, trying to make up for what we know we've done wrong. That is very much always before us, isn't it? Our sin. But we can't make up for it. The good news of the gospel is that there's someone who can, and that is Jesus. So let's review these. God, our sins. And we have letter P. Who's got the letter P? Oh, who's got Oh, that's how it's There we go. Everyone. 
who trusts in him alone has eternal life. Romans 6, 5, we read, Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. These verses are the definition of grace. We do not get what we deserve. We receive forgiveness and renewal from guilt and shame when we confess our sins. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. Because of the death of Jesus and the resurrection, we can have life. And this is why I believe that shepherds responded in the way that they did, by worshipping and then going immediately and telling others about what they had seen, about what they had heard. They did not keep it to themselves or wait until somebody else would do it. Nobody likes to brag. Okay, well, some people like to brag, it's true. But nobody likes a bragger. However, as Christians, I give you permission right now to brag about something this season. I want you to brag about the gospel. Brag about the Lord Jesus Christ. Brag about who he is and what he has done in your life and what he continues to do, which is to change lives. To turn us around. God, our sins, pain, everyone. And with L, you've got letter L. Oh, okay. so. <laughs> 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 L, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. It's for life. Life, now and then lasts forever. This is the joy, this is the excitement of the gospel. Life starts now. That's a key point. Life starts now. Life and life abundant, and life, life lasts forever. That's the gospel in a nutshell. It's what the shepherds were sharing they did encounter the baby, the Messiah, and this baby changed their lives. For those of you who have kids or have been around kids, you know that a baby, a newborn baby, changes your life very radically. You don't get sleep anymore. Everything begins to revolve around this little one. We've all been there, peering over the crib, listening to the breaths. Baby's still breathing. Good, good, good. Everything is centered around the child. It changes everything. And the baby, Jesus, the Christ child, changed the world through all of time. His arrival is the good news that paved the way for all people to experience life now. And just like the angels did, just like the angels told the shepherds in Luke 2, this good news will bring people great joy. It will bring them great joy. And friends, people still need great joy today. They still need to hear this great news, this good news, the gospel. So what are you going to do about it? Unfortunately, for some in this room, your lives may not be full of great joy right now. And for some of you, I know that your lives are full of joy despite life circumstances right now. Joy comes from the Lord. And it's fine when we accept and we live out and share the gospel and all that it means. Let's stop focusing on what we do not have and start sharing what we do, the gospel. A God who created us, who loves us, who sent his son for us, a son that was born and died and rose to give us life and life abundantly and life eternal. And the Holy Spirit walks along side of us 
and with us as we share this gospel with others. So our challenge today is twofold. Do you know the gospel? Do you know the gospel? God, our sins, pain, life, everyone, life. Which people in your life are you praying for right now? That their hearts will be receptive to your sharing of the gospel. Are you praying for opportunities to reach them, to talk about it? Do you have an urgency within you to share the good news about Jesus, just like the shepherds did? If so, then I would encourage you to ask the Lord each and every day for opportunities to do so. And he'll provide them to you. Believe me, he will. And if you don't have that urgency, if you're honest with yourself, you recognize that you don't have that. Pray to God to press, impress that urgency and that courage upon your heart to share when he gives you that opportunity. You've heard the gospel, let go, learn more about it, love it, live it, and share it with great joy in your hearts. We're going to sing a song now in a moment. Can we tell them about it? I'll put it on here. After we pray, it's a joyful song to send us out, and it, it really impresses upon us the need to do this, to shout it from the mountaintops. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to sing that song together. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, and we bow down, as the shepherds did, and worship to you, Lord Jesus. That you would come in this form, born of a virgin, come to earth in human flesh, to be our Savior, to save us from our sins. God, help us to recognize the truth that we are dead in our sins. But the good news is that you've come to rescue us. You are the rescuer. Other people need to know about the rescuer. And we are your ambassadors here on earth. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to have that urgency and provide the opportunities. And what better opportunities than this season of Christmas? Lord, strengthen us. Help us to do this. Help us to challenge one another, spur one another on to do this. This season and into the next year, 2023. Bless us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And those of us that stand as we sing.